It's being called the trial of the century. This weekend, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the self-professed brains behind the September 11 attacks, will face a military tribunal in Guantanamo Bay, along with four of his co-accused. The 46-year-old Kuwaiti-born Mohammed is not only at the centre of the 9-11 plot, but also the debate about justice in the age of terrorism. North America correspondent Jane Cowan reports. It was a cathartic moment ten years in the making. Osama bin Laden's death at the hands of US Navy SEALs prompted an outpouring of emotion in the streets of Washington and New York. With the daring nighttime raid, Barack Obama finally delivered Americans the retribution they'd longed for. The death of bin Laden marks the most significant achievement to date in our nation's effort to defeat Al-Qaeda. But there's still more unfinished business to be dealt with. In terms of sort of closing the 9-11 chapter, this is a pretty big one. I mean, putting Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and also other people involved who are in Guantanamo on trial, it's long overdue. He calls himself the Jackal. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed's allegedly confessed to orchestrating the September 11 plot from A to Z, first suggesting it to Osama bin Laden and then directing the actual operation. I, I refer to him as the James Bond of jihad. That's the way he saw himself. Captured in Pakistan in 2003, Muhammad was shipped between a series of secret prisons run by the CIA before ending up at Guantanamo Bay, where he's been languishing since 2006. His admissions show a career in terrorism. He's boasted of personally beheading the reporter Daniel Pearl and allegedly had a hand in the 2002 Bali nightclub bombing that killed 88 Australians. He was constantly kind of dreaming up very exotic plots and he was kind of running around the world. He had multiple aliases. Um, you know, he seemed to generally enjoy what had become his job. But efforts to bring Khalid Sheikh Mohammed to justice have become mired in politics. Barack Obama came to power promising to close Guantanamo Bay and put a freeze on Bush-era military tribunals. But a plan to try the case in a civilian court in New York just blocks from ground zero provoked outrage. And Republicans in Congress blocked the transfer of detainees to the US mainland. Now, Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is set to be tried by military commission at Guantanamo Bay. Doubts about the prospects of a fair and transparent trial on this remote island are complicated by allegations Muhammad was subjected to torture in the form of waterboarding or simulated drowning. Uh, Stephen so Vladek was part of the legal team that successfully uh, challenged the, the Bush uh, administration's uh, use of military uh, tribunals. In US law, there's actually a tradition of dismissing charges when the government has brought them after engaging in what we call outrageous conduct, conduct that shocks the conscience. Um, certainly, if the reports are to be believed, that's what happened in this case. I think it's unlikely that the commission will uh, even seriously consider dismissing this case on the basis that the torture of these defendants shocks the conscience. But I think that's the closest it could come. I don't think it'll be a factor at all. Uh, I don't think there'll be any evidence offered that will be have been the product of uh, of, of coercion uh, or dehuman, dehumanizing uh, types of interrogation. John Altenberg worked on military commissions inside the Bush administration and defends them vigorously. They are fair and, and I think that the American people will be gratified to see how fair they are. If there is evidence that is borderline coercive or, or is arguably torture, then that needs to be litigated in the courtroom. And that'll be done, I think, in a transparent way. This isn't about justice. This is about killing Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. And it's monumentally stupid. Clive Stafford-Smith has secured the release of 65 prisoners from Guantanamo Bay and acts for 15 more who are among the 169 people still locked up there. What you're going to find is every time the defence wants to put a prisoner up to talk about the torture he suffered, the curtains are going to come across and you, the media, are not going to hear about it. Because what we've done is we've totally conflated national security secrecy with political embarrassment. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed is widely expected to be convicted and to get his wish for martyrdom. But terrorism consultants like Mark Sageman aren't worried a death penalty will inspire al-Qaeda. Well, I think that uh, they'll probably go to the internet and scream. And that's it. 
they don't have any capability in the West. And uh, had they had, they would have done a few things since. The threat of terrorism has shaped the American psyche for the past decade. What kind of mark this brand of justice leaves is something else entirely. What's so sad is that when Obama came into office, 65% of Americans wanted to close Guantanamo. Now, 60 or 65% want to keep it open. I think for every American who sees in a final result here that is a conviction and perhaps an execution, uh, uh, vindication, I think there will be another American who worries that, you know, we've sacrificed those liberties that make defending the nation worthwhile. Jane Cowan reports.